leather rock here. Today we are going to, I want to show you a look. Oh, hold on a second. Tabby boy, what are you doing? Oh, bad cat. Bad cat. We are going to show you a look I got from the B&H Cosmetic Wild Child palette. You want to take a look at this palette. This is a mostly neutral palette. It has a really pretty peachy, pinky, orangey, light color in the middle. And it has a very useful frosty white on the bottom. And, ah, and a couple gold kind of colors. And those alone make it kind of useful for a look like we have here. I'm going to put my cat down so we can resume this video. Because my cat always has to steal the video. This is the Tabby Boy Show. It's not, this is the Leather Rock channel. It's the Tabby Boy channel, he thinks. Sit down, be good. Now, where were we? Oh, boy. Uh, another thing about this palette, this has a plum kind of shade. Yeah, you could call it plum. I guess these colors don't come with col with names on them, unlike some other of the palettes. Um, this has a number of bronzy shades. Uh, some are more coppery. Some have almost greenish metallic undertones. Um, there are no mattes in this palette. They're all frosts. Um, this one here is almost like a flesh-toned pink kind of I don't want to say plumish kind of but so muted so pale uh, I really had to think long and hard about uh, what I could do with this and one thing I noticed that the most natural looking of makeup tends to be the most complicated to execute as we are about to see now Tabby boy left my room but as you can see Ace the cat's still here, and uh, isn't he getting small? Okay, I'm going to close this door here so I don't make too much noise during this. Ungrateful cat. Now, we are going to do my standard format where I take off half of the side, and I'm going to use, this is still coconut oil. This is a Crisco brand, and this is refined, so unfortunately it doesn't have a typical wonderful smell that the coconut oil would have, but it cooks up the same. I was supposed to use uh, coconut oil to make a uh, chocolate icing recipe uh, this week. My roommate was telling me that she wanted to uh, find a recipe that used coconut oil, but by the time I finally found one, she changed her mind and didn't want to make the chocolate cake. I said, don't give me, you know I have an appetite for chocolate. Don't tease me like that. Yeah, just a little bit of advice there. Okay, I've got something to clip my hair up so that I can get it out of my way so that I don't get a whole bunch of coconut oil on my hair. Because I know that coconut oil is a really great moisturizing treatment, but a little tiny bit of it goes a very long way. And then you end up having to do so many shampooings to get it out. So these things break on me like crazy okay Here's the I really miss the smell of the other stuff actually I do have in the kitchen I do have a jar that has like oh a half a teaspoon left of the original and that is a lot of times what I will use um, for any of the leave-on coconut oil treatments like it's always good to put on your stomach so that it keeps the elasticity and things and this you end up putting when you take you use this to actually take your makeup off at the end of the night or whatever you end up putting it on and wiping it off and putting it back on about four or five times actually to really get all the oil or not the oil to get the makeup off I'm only, for the sake of this, I'm only going to go over the eyes once or twice.
You know, another nice thing about using coconut oil to take the eye makeup off is unlike many other makeup removers, this does not burn the eyes. So long as what you're putting on, what you use, what you're taking off, never burn you on the application process. This doesn't burn. That is very, very much preferable. I, I hope I did a good job of, I'm doing a good job of taking this off because I used a pencil and I, I did some water lining. So. Oh, you know what I forgot to bring in my room? I, I usually bring a wet washcloth so I can go over my oily face that has the makeup off it. Oh, if my skin looks darker to you, that's because I use the BB cream instead of my regular foundation. Uh, I use it, the company's called Sassy and Chic, and it's called, yeah, it says BB Beauty Multi-Action Skincare and Makeup, and that's what I used on my face. And it stayed all day. Just before filming, I thought that there was some uh, wear through. So I touched up a little under the eyes. I'm not wearing a separate uh, concealer anywhere on my skin. All you see is this and my usual contour color. And I tried to use as much as possible from this kit. So I even use colors from this kit for my blush and I used the white for the highlight as we're, we'll, we will be about to see. Okay, for this, let's start with what I would use underneath. Now this time I broke one of my quote unquote rules about the kind of layer that I use to prep my eyeshadow. Uh, because this BB cream doesn't have a real dry dry down, I actually went ahead and used some of this under my eye. Now because this color is kind of darker than my skin, I'm not going to carry it all the way up to my eyebrow like I usually would with whatever layer I'm using. Um, if you're also, another thing you can do if you're concerned about the dry down of a product that you're using to prep your eyes with, if you have any of that coconut oil handy. See I have a little tiny bit of coconut oil on my hand. I'm going to touch a bit of it to a finger and I'm going to pat the eyelid that I just coated with a thin layer of BB cream. That will further moisten the eyelid and give it something to for the makeup that we're about to apply to hold on to. I'm going to wipe the rest of this stuff off the back of my hand because I don't want to get makeup on my bracelets. Okay, this is a, the palette here. Now, I started off with doing something I don't often do because it is so important for the layer that you put your eyeshadows on to be kind of sticky so that the eyeshadows do stick to it. That's the whole point. And yet I see a lot of people who will, uh oh, uh, I see a lot of people who will use a light layer of eyeshadow and then blend a bunch of colors on top of it and it just ends up being that it's harder for the colors to adhere. Now I just said uh oh because I thought I dropped an uh, eyeshadow brush but I didn't. I just dropped my um, pencil that I'm going to use for my eyeliner but since it's nowhere near the time to need to do that I'm not going to worry about that now but uh, while I'm thinking about it there we do have um, antibacterial wipes over there and I'm going to grab them 
Hold on a second. Okay, so by when it's time for me to get the pencil, no, nah, you know what? I should do this now. Yes, this is kind of real time, people, because I am not to. I'm I'm filming tonight. You know, it, as I'm filming, just so you know, it's Monday night, and for some reason, I expected that I had an extra day before Tuesday, which is my post day. And I came to the realization, you know what? I have to make a video tonight so that I can have a video for Tuesday. So that's why I am doing a tutorial on the makeup that I'm wearing right now. So now that we have that under clear, okay, I want to check to see which brush. The thing about doing this technique is you have to make sure that you're using the proper brushes that you used for the colors. Okay, now I'm going to start with the top flesh color very very pale pink color uh, I'm going to turn the light off for a second just so you have a kind of an idea of what these colors really look like if that's any help but I'm going to put the light back on I'm going to take this and put some on the brush and I'm going to lightly wash kind of from the top to here okay very lightly because I really don't want to make it so that these other colors are I want to make sure that they could stick on the eye that's the whole point and because these colors look so similar to each other and this is a more natural look I don't want to be having to do a whole bunch of blending I want to set things the colors block them next to each other so that they show up that's kind of the whole point okay I'm going to take my probably my favorite color out of all these colors in this palette is the center one it's really kind of peachy it's not bright enough to be orange it's certainly too orange to be pink and the thing is it doesn't show up on my skin that well but i'm going to put some in this area i'm not going to go as far as a corner because i'm going to end up using the corner to pack white on now these are baked they can be used wet or dry but i'm not doing these wet I noticed one thing about when you apply them wet with this particular with these particular shadows I'm not saying with baked shadows as a rule but once you get them wet because see what I do I don't know that you're supposed to do instead of just wetting the brush getting the product on the brush and then wetting the brush and then these people use these expensive wetting sprays I just use water I'm you know I, I'm not going to spend forty dollars for a fancy liquid I'm not, it's, it's ridiculous but if I'm actually getting the shadows wet themselves, if I am not changing the palettes, I don't know. But I mean, I, that's what I do. I actually get water on the palette itself and go like this. I mean, it's not like I'm using these on a bunch of other people or anything. So from a sanitary standpoint, and if I use them up, I don't think I'm hurting, I'm doing any damage. Okay, I got peach on that. And I'm going to get the white in the corner. Now I'm going to get, there's like a gold kind of color. And I'm just barely going to touch it because I don't want to overpower now I'm going to kind of go like this, kind of almost like a triangle vaguely, but not too much because I don't want to get too dark. And then I'm going to, for my crease, I'm going to go back my crease and I'm going to touch this. This is the e.l.f. C brush. It's a packing brush. This is not... A blending sweeping brush this is a, a packing brush but I can use this to apply a crease color I'm just touching it pressing it into to get some color on the top bristles on this brush because I don't want to overpower this look and I am going to go along the lines of the crease but since uh, my uh, lids are getting a little bit hooded now I'm going to go a little bit maybe above the crease but I want to do it subtle enough so that I don't overpower. 
Okay, you see how I could see that there's a line? Okay, now I'm going to stop and I'm going to blend. Now some people use that color, the same brush. Some people use another brush to blend. I think I'm going to go and get a fresh brush to blend. I don't know if that many people start off with the makeup on both sides of their face and take it off one side and do it. I kind of, to me, that kind of makes sense. But the only thing is the other eye that's had the fresh makeup, that's had the makeup on for a number of hours versus this fresh makeup that hasn't had a chance to oxidize. It makes it harder to duplicate. Okay, I'm going to use a fresh brush here to blend that out. Now this time I already took a bunch of quote unquote thumbnails before I did this so that at least I know the sides match. Now I got my pencil. I wiped it off with an antibacterial thing. Now it's really important to sharpen these regularly and I sharpened these before I did my waterline. I didn't want a line to overpower this makeup because since these eyeshadows are rather subtle, I wanted something that let the shadow shine. Uh, I can't set this down on my laptop because this is magnetic and that's a computer. Oh, oh okay, I could set it here. Oh, I forgot where the mirror is. Okay, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. For my mascara, I use the LA Colors. It really holds a curl and it's not waterproof, but it stands up stands up to the things I need. I haven't tested it on an extremely windy day. It, it, it doesn't intend to be high performance, but what's nice about it is, and, and, and it's not like big false eyelashes dramatic either but it's easy to take off at the end of the night and that really that saves time it really does having some things as much as I need waterproof things when you are doing a makeup just for you know you're going to be around the house or doing errands that don't get you all sweaty and what have you or you're just going to be shooting video indoors then it's good to have some things that are easy to wash off it's all like anything else in life it's choices make feel so much freer and it's easier to be happy Oh, I wanted to put a little bit of pencil underneath. Yeah. 
I always stress about whether these match. You know what? I'm going to have to redo the other side to make sure they match better. What do you think? Okay. Now this is a look with one, two, three, four, five, with five colors out of the Wet and Wild Wild. I mean, excuse me, B and H Cosmetics Wild Child nine color baked eyeshadow palette. This is you could also, I'm sure, do smoky eye looks with most of the colors here but uh, this is what it looks like if you just put some of them by each other it doesn't require a lot of blending this is how much time it took to do that so if you like these videos hit the subscribe button I'd love to have you join my family hit that bell notification thing and if you do that then you'll know when I make my next upload um, I upload three times a week uh, I try to have a cat in my videos because they're very important to me. So if you watch my videos, get used to them. And uh, I'd love to see you next time. Talk to you soon. Bye.